Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 16 of Off the Wall with Cody here on Amateur Sports T TV. I'm your host, Cody Wall. <clears throat> Last week, I had the opportunity to talk to a friend of mine, Taylor Audette, a multi-sport athlete who competes in softball, hockey, and softball, and uh, stock car racing all over Manitoba here. Uh, it was nice getting to catch up with her. In our interview, uh, we talked about how her seasons in her respective sports had gone and kind of what she's planning to do post-graduation, uh, as well as talked about how she's going to be going to try out for uh, the Manitoba Junior Women's Hockey Leagues and how that kind of format there is uh, almost like a, a trial camp for the whole league. So that's an interesting uh, concept there. And if you've missed out on that episode, you can go back and watch on our YouTube page, on our Facebook page, and on our website, amateursports.tv, under the sports drop down. And speaking of our website, uh, since our last show on Tuesday, it's come out on our Amateur Sports TV Facebook page that we will be working on an ASTV Prospects database. Uh, so that's interesting. It's going to be complete with stats, videos, game footage, highlights, scouting videos, bio, rank, rankings, interviews, articles, endorsements, historical data, and more. And uh, ASTV is doing that through the work with our partners, such as Stats Track, Clever, uh, to bring you the best product for the player going forward. You can find a sample of those on our website under the player profiles drop down. Uh, you'll see a team one uh, template as well as a player template. Uh, one of our, taking a look, uh, one of our partnering teams, the Prince George Kodiaks, recently having a game this last week and uh, managed to find their first victory of the season. And uh, I believe first victory of their short existence in the Canadian Junior Football League when they won 28 to 20 over the visiting Valley Huskers. Uh, <clears throat> looking forward, the Kodiaks are going to be going to face the Okanagan Sun before coming back home on September 10th to take on the Langley Rams. Uh, that game against the Rams is going to be brought to you by ASTV and can be watched pay-per-view on bcfctv.com. <clears throat> Taking a look at uh, our show for today, we're going to have on one of those partners I did mention. Uh, going to be coming on with me is the, one of the founders of Clever Company recently a company we recently started dealing with here on ASTV, uh, Chris Versteeg, uh, former NHL player. Uh, Chris dives into what he's been doing post-playing post career, uh, what it's been like developing this app, Clever. Uh, he's going to talk about all the details of it, as well as uh, he, spending some his time post-retirement coaching at the youth level and uh, Chris is going to talk more about that once we do get to that interview. But before we get to that interview, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break and hear from some of our supporters here on ASTV. Uh, the guys out there that help us keep the program rolling as smooth as it is, uh, we'll be right back for our interview with Chris Versteeg. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment
Coming on today, we have two-time Stanley Cup winner, NHL veteran of over 600 games, and sports entrepreneur, Chris Versteeg. Uh, Chris, thanks for coming on Off the Wall today. How are you today? I'm good. Uh, I was good probably about an hour ago before my kid got sick, but all in all good and happy to be here. Yeah, we, we had to delay this a little bit. Uh, you had messaged me just uh, a couple minutes before saying uh, you had some some difficulties uh, with some puking kids. So good to see you got it under control there. Well, I don't know if it's under control, but he's in bed. So that's all yeah. that matters. <laughs> uh, your hockey career uh, kind of brought you all over the place over your 14 year career uh, from the West Coast of LA uh, to spending some time in Europe. You definitely got uh, the opportunity to see different parts of the world and North America after settling down after your playing career, uh, where have you and your family kind of elected to call home? I know talking uh, seems like you've kind of been all over the place, uh, Alberta, Ontario lately, but where do you call home? Yeah, we are all over. Right now it's Brooklyn, Ontario. It's a suburb of Whitby, so about 35 minutes, 40 minutes with no traffic from downtown Toronto. So it's uh, where I am now. I'm also actually back in Lethbridge about a month out of every year. Uh, I have my hockey schools that run in August, and I'm there uh, seeing all my family, my grandparents, my Oma, my mom, uh, her husband and my dad and his wife are all out there. So I'm there. Out, I'm still out west about a month out of the year, but mainly now um, in, in Brooklyn, and it's where I, I have my new uh, ventures, my hockey schools uh, out here as well. So I'm mainly here now. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, you kind of alluded to it already, uh, your hockey ventures uh, dating back to uh, about a year ago, you had started, I believe, with your brother and a couple other partners in developing an app that now has, uh, as of December 2021, launched, uh, and that is Clever. Uh, you want to tell the people a little bit about that? Yeah, so back in December, or actually it was October of 2020, we started building the tech in December of 2021. We ended up launching it officially into the market. And well, in October when COVID hit, a lot of parents were actually trying to reach out to me to get clips, draw on them, voice them over and send them back. And there just wasn't an efficient way for me to do that, to basically get that clip, draw on it, voice it over, tell the athlete what they need to do and then send it back. Uh, before you were on other platforms like Coach's Eye and, and these really clunky, slow platforms. So what we wanted was a streamlined process of um, the coach to coach communication or the coach to athlete and parent communication. And that's what we've done. We've streamlined the process for getting a clip, taking a clip, teaching it and sharing it. Um, what used to take about an hour and using two to three different platforms to do now I can do 36 kids clips in under an hour. So I have a bunch of kids that can send me their shot. I can teach them, you know, within uh, basically under two minutes and send it back. So um, now we've built the marketplace, which inside the app we've just launched. And now coaches, uh, real good coaches, high quality coaches are in the marketplace and they're able to monetize their knowledge uh, very fast, very efficiently now. Um, what before, uh, while before it, it just wasn't there. So that's what we've tried to do is uh, streamline that process and give coaches the tools that they never had possible before. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, launched December 21, uh, how has the feedback been so far with the app? Yeah, it's been great. You know, sometimes there's negative things and you don't want to hear about it. When you have an app or you build anything like a product, generally you see it as your baby. So you think it's perfect, but it's far from that. And the biggest thing we want to do is listen to our customer feedback, what they don't like, what they do like, what they want to see, the features they want to see, and then possible things that'll make it obviously scale faster and, and let more people use it. So that's the biggest thing is listen to our customer feedback. Where does this button need to be? What are they liking? And then obviously putting it into the app, building it, and then testing it again, whether it be with us and then getting it back out in the field and letting our customers play with it and, and see if they like it. And that's why I think over the last eight months, we've definitely evolved. We've brought more people into our team, whether it's been developers or C-level execs, and they're definitely trying to take the app to the next level. Uh, and that's where I think it's going to go. I think in the next you know six to eight months, you're going to see the app evolve even more 
uh, and you're going to see it go to another, um, I, I believe, stratosphere, especially if we start hitting the marketing. We've never done any marketing yet. It's more been about customer feedback and building the best product. And then when we feel it's at the right point, we'll turn the marketing on and go from there. But I think in the next six to eight months, you're going to see it even evolve more and more and get better and better. And we have an incredible development team that's got it to the point thus far, and, and especially in a short amount of time. So I couldn't be uh, more proud with all the work that everyone's put into it. But it is a new process for me, and um, I'm just happy to be guided by a lot of great people and great minds. Yeah, definitely the first time I, I heard about uh, your endeavor here uh, was an interesting idea. I kind of heard about it originally uh, through an interview you had done with the Spit and Chicklets podcast, one uh, you know, that's kind of propelled me to get into this media game. Uh, and, you know, uh, it was an interesting idea that kind of, I believe it was before the app had officially launched, you had done that interview uh, probably, I think, was probably just over a year ago when uh, probably the idea started coming to you guys. But was the idea kind of driven from uh, the lack of, communication with COVID? Yeah. So actually it was two and a half. Well, it would have been that interview happened in May, I believe roughly May of 2020 when we started building the product and it might even been a little before that, maybe April. And that's where, um, like you said, the lack of communication. So I had retired from hockey and athletes, especially my agent would send me athletes clips. And I'm like, all I want to be able to do is get the clip you know, pull it up on my phone, draw on it and teach my agents, uh, athletes, um, real efficiently. But what I had to do is either draw on a piece of paper, Hey, which part of the clip you got to look at or hop on a zoom call. And it just was very inefficient. So right around that time, I did that spitting checklets, um, podcast. And that's where I was like, my goal is to build an app that gives really quick two way communication between the coach and the athlete, you know, besides having to go on two different platforms or just like clunky tech, I'm like, it should just be that simple. And that's what clever it is. It is that simple. And it now gives the athlete and the coach or a parent that two way communication with uh, video teaching or even a coach to coach. And it just gives that quick two way communication that I was begging for basically in April, May of, of 2020, right before I went on that spit and chicklets podcast. And it's funny, I went on that podcast and a lot of people heard me say that. And I do know there's a couple other apps that were, I don't know where they are today, but they were started based off hearing that interview, knowing what athletes, parents and coaches had been looking for in the market. I am very fortunate that we are here now, especially with the tech and, and how fast it's been built. But um it is a it was a piece that uh had been missing and that's why it's nice to see clever being used now and and when you hear people when they finally get on it coaches or parents or athletes and you hear about how it's making athletes better because they can now see themselves and they can at least get feedback in real time like we have a coach in vancouver uh, he's a rugby coach, Team Canada rugby coach, and he's teaching athletes in Scotland in real time. So basically a, an athlete in Scotland could show them throwing a ball on the sideline. He could teach it and send it back just like that. So when you hear that, those testimonials and that feedback and you know it's what it was designed to do, um, it's, pro it's one of the best feelings in the world. You know you're helping people, you're helping athletes, and that's what this started from. It's about getting athletes quick, instant feedback. Um, I was an athlete before, and, and that's what we're all about. We're just trying to help athletes in the next generation and do it at cost, too. There's tech out there. It's not even great tech, I don't think, a lot of it, some of it. And it's very slow, right? And it's very expensive. And we wanted quick, easy-to-use tech at low cost, and that's why ours is free, right? Our current tech's free. There will be some pieces at, at some point. Obviously, it'll be charged for. But I was like, how do you help the next generation where cost is already at extreme highs, right? To buy skates, to buy soccer cleats, to buy anything, it's getting out of control. So how do we get tech in there that can help athletes at a low cost? And I think that's what we've done as well. And uh, this app, it isn't just for hockey per se. It's for, like you said, rugby, uh, soccer, uh, pretty much any, or all sports or is there any, some sort of limitation still? No, any sport, any activity. Uh, we have fitness instructors using it now. So basically you could send your fitness uh, video to, you know, if, if someone comes to the gym and they need a workout plan, that trainer can upload it and send it to their, um, their athletes or their clients. Not only that, 
They could also take a clip of themselves doing the exercise, send it back to the coach. Hey, look at you here on this squat. You're not doing this right or you're not doing that exercise right. We have some physiotherapists trying it out. Um, we have, uh, I mean, we've I've seen rodeo on it. You know, I've seen some people in barrel racing using our app. So not only just hockey, soccer, baseball, basketball. I know at one point we had eight sports. We're probably up near 10 plus people in fitness on it now. So now it's about, you know, hearing what they want, hearing what else can make the app better. And also, you know, what else is out there? What else can we do? So uh, like this app, definitely a huge tool to help athletes. Uh, but you think it really kind of takes the whole coaching, uh, overall coaching for everybody out there to the next level with having access to uh, just a higher level now with it just being a click away? A hundred percent. Yeah. When, when you, when we first give some coaches clever, they're like, well, it might be too cumbersome or too slow because that's what they're used to. Right. And they're not really used to using technology this efficiently. So when I give it to a coach and then I show them how easy it is to use, and then you show them using it with their athletes, say it is as simple as a hockey, you know, a slap shot, the, the athlete could do it as much as they want, but until they see themselves, they can't really make the adjustments they need to. So then you show the athlete what they're doing in seconds, they can change it. They get better right there. And that lets the coach take his coaching to the next level because it was so simple and easy to use. And because he was using it with his athletes right there, now they start using it. So like you said, this is about taking coaching to the next level, which takes the athlete to the next level and not just the elite athlete. It could be uh, a B C level athlete, right? The ones that are just trying to get better. The ones that are coming into sport that need to learn about sport. You also have that. Now you can buy little shooting packs for me. So if you're a four-year-old who's never shot a puck before five-year-old, you can come in and you can buy some stuff from me, or you can look at other coaches that are selling stuff or see what they're teaching for free on their um, profile that can help that athlete, right? Rather than having to go get um, shooting lessons or certain lessons at a high cost or, you know, where you have to go on zoom at time, right? This is just an efficient way that should allow coaches first off to monetize their knowledge, but also allow um, more people to see what they can do to get better, which again, like you said, would get coaching to the next level. Well, it just sounds like this app clever, uh, is going to be on the up and up and, uh, good to hear that, uh, you know, it's so far, everything sounds like it's going in the, the right direction. Um, as I mentioned, uh, heard it about it on spit and chicklets, which, uh, is, you know, what part of the reason I found getting you on the, my show so interesting was, uh, cause I love that, sh that podcast, uh, so much getting one of their alumni, uh, definitely was a cool, uh, little tip in my hat, as well as the fact that she played for one of my childhood teams growing up back before my local Winnipeg Jets, uh, were playing, you were winning the Stanley cup with the 2010 and 15 Chicago Blackhawks. So uh, a couple of cool things just having you on here, but uh, turning our attention to another thing that you've been kind of working with. You said you've been doing a lot of camps. Uh, you also talked uh, off air when we were off air uh, about a uh, tournament you're helping with in Florida called the Paradise Cup. Uh, that's in going to be going into its second year uh, after last year going in February. Uh, you want to tell people a little bit about that? Yeah, I can just start with what the clever young kings are. So it's um it's an academy program for athletes the age of, well, now five. It was six to nine, and we actually have um, as early as five-year-olds now. So Liam Reddix is actually heading that program. Ex-NHL athlete, played pro in Europe for a long time. And so we're taking athletes in the Durham region, really young, working with them four days a week, um, designing a program that will hopefully help get the best out of them and get them ready for the AAA level when they – go back to the GTHL or their AAA teams at their centers when they turn 10 years old. So uh, that's what we're doing out here right now. We're also going into some AAU tournaments. They're full ice, uh, full ice tournaments in the States. And that's what the Paradise Cup is. Uh, Matt Miles from Exposure Hockey puts on these events and they're great events. We're actually going to the first one in Chicago, September 2nd. Uh, to the fourth and then we're going to another one in boston october 28th to the 30th and then finally like you said the paradise cup in florida i'll have four teams going to it two 2014 age uh one 2015 and another 2015 16 split so four teams going to the paradise cup 
uh, one team going to Chicago and four going to Boston. So it's exciting. It's exciting to bring some, you know, Canadian kids down to the States to play against the top players in the USA at that age group. Uh, and, I, and I can't wait to get down there. So they, these age groups you mentioned, uh, these are guys that, uh, you know, for, for me, just getting back from the Brick Invitational, these are guys that are going to be going to that tournament in the next couple of years, having just seen the 2011 and 2012 uh, yeah. You said that this is going to be the 13, 14, 15 years. So this will be the 14, 15, 16. So 14. these will be that year. So 13 will be next year at the brick. And then a lot of, I would assume, you know, we have the, the Bulldogs are actually entered into the Chicago tournament. So we play the Bulldogs a lot. Our 2015s have a pretty great rivalry with them. It's actually pretty exciting hockey. I never thought I could get uh, that excited watching uh, six and seven year olds play, but um so the bulldogs will be actually going to that they're a real they're they're the top team in ontario obviously at the 2015 level and they got a really good 2014 and 13 age group as well so i don't know how many of the players will play for the brick obviously it's very hard to make the brick and that's you know still two years away for the 2014 players but i would assume you know 20 percent of the players going probably 20 or 30 percent of the players going to the exposure cup will play in the brick and for these teams that you're uh, coaching, are they? Do you guys have tryouts throughout the the year, or is it kind of once you have a team set, it almost you bring the team up through the system? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we actually started that by just it was kind of hand picking the players, uh, offering an invite to them. Um, they came, and then we did do an ID skate actually at the end of last season to see if there was any other players interested in being a part of the program at the 2015 and 2016 level. And that's where it did become a selection process, but going forward, it will be more of a selection process rather than a tryout. So um, players will be, you know, we'll see if players are interested if we, there's other top players in and around the Durham area that are interested in the program. Obviously we will, we will reach out to them. Now that's for the winter program, the spring programming, is going to be a, a tryout so we will have players uh our tryouts will be in december for the 2014 15 and 16 age groups and that's where it'll be more of an open tryout but yeah the winter programming will be more on invite and selection and uh obviously last year being the inaugural season for the paradise cup uh what have you and the tournament organizers kind of taken from last year's experience and uh brought into this year to kind of Bring it to the next level. Well, so the Paradise Cup last year was actually for the age of 12 and 13 year olds. And that uh, that was an incredible event. And, and I got to go to it and see how it was ran. So and obviously talking with Matt, Matt wanted to do the event at the Paradise Cup now for the mites, for the, uh, you know, the younger athletes. So, again, this will be the first time it's actually done with um, athletes age seven and eight. And so it, it will be new. It'll be interesting to be a part of, but you will be playing against some of the top teams. You know, the international stars will be there. Uh, St. Louis Hockey Club, there will be, you know, and in Boston, you're going to see a lot of the top Boston teams. So, and they'll end up all probably becoming the Terriers or um, the top programs in Boston. So it'll be um, exciting to see a lot of these top clubs and top teams there. Um, but it is the first year for this age group, but it is obviously, like you said, the second year of the Paradise Cup, just at a different age group. But I do believe Matt is running um, the same age group that he ran last year. I just won't be a part of that one. Okay, yeah, when doing some research uh, for this interview, I kind of thought I had seen that the age group that was posted last year was one for, uh, that was so, like almost post-brick. Yeah, so that could be right. That could be right um it could be it, it'll it'll be a post brick age group like you said that's what it was last year as well so the kids are probably 11 and 12 year olds and that's what the exposure cup was last year so i hadn't looked into the scheduling if they are the same week as us but if it is man those 11 and 12 year olds as you've seen at the brick you know the 10 year olds it's wild what they can do they're very special players not only just the brick players there's so many amazing players that you know some can't afford to go right? Some players can't afford it. It is expensive. Some players are just, you know, not ready at 10 years old. So when you see some of these players at 11 and 12, you know, the, it's amazing to see how good they're. Yeah. You had kind of mentioned it before how it, it's just, you know, you can't even believe how exciting it is to watch uh, youth hockey like this. 
uh, you know, yeah, you can't even put it into words. Uh, you know, I had high, such high expectations going to uh, the Brick Tournament, but it just really was surpassed all I had kind of expected. You really got to be there to feel the environment and the excitement level around these uh, young hockey players. Yeah, youth sports is amazing, right? It's as for me, I didn't really quite understand it when you're playing in the NHL and then you have children and you come back and, you know, you get to watch your kids play and enjoy the environment and um, be around like, you know, other kids that want to be good hockey players, right? Or other parents that want to see their kids do well, right? And that's what it is. It's about being in, in that community again, in that environment, and there's nothing better than hockey. And it's just so much fun. You know, like I was saying before, we have a pretty crazy rivalry with the, the Bulldogs, right? And to see the six-year-olds kind of get revved up, seven-year-olds to get revved up to play in the game, it's the it's pretty cool. It's, it's you know, hockey to me at its purest form, just kids playing hard, having fun. And after the game, they go have chicken nuggets together you know, and they all have popcorn and drink pop and they're just kids. It's, uh, it's the best thing about sport. Sport teaches you everything. You, you it taught me everything I know. It gave me all the friendships I have and it's exciting to see the kids start it again. But yeah, when you see a, a true finals game, you know, between us and the Bulldogs or between a, a top club and in, in these finals and you just see, you know, the passion of the athletes and the electricity, it's, it's really a lot of fun and uh, amazing to be a part of. Uh, last question before I let you go, Chris. Uh, obviously, you've had a pretty eventful career from playing to now transitioning to an entrepreneur. Uh, what's next on the horizon for Chris for Steve? Yeah, there's there's a couple things. Um, we're actually starting the Clever Network. It is uh, the network for Clever, where you know athletes can come in, teams can join. Uh, there will be a lot of drill sharing, um, connecting athletes across North America in the network. So if you are interested in checking that out, obviously go to clever, K-L-E-V-R, network.com. That'll be kind of what's next. But also getting clever, the marketplace off the ground. So I'm really busy with that. And uh, so anyone being in a startup, it's not easy. It's hard. And obviously figuring out some partnerships that can help with that. Uh, to get clever to the next level and in as many athletes' hands as possible to get their games to the next level. So that's really what I'm focused on. And then as a family, uh, just being around my kids and enjoying the time and watching them grow and play, it's my favorite part of uh, of everything, hands down, more than, more than anything I do in business or life. It's just being a part of their lives. So it's exciting to see them grow. Well, it sounds like uh, you got the, the post-career life going quite well for you. You got it figured out, which... Uh, it's great to hear, Chris. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know if it's ever figured out, but you try. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, you got it. All you got to do is try. But yeah. like you mentioned, uh, partnerships with Clever, uh, you know, it's exciting to see. Hopefully, uh, ASTV, and uh, I know you've been in contact with our boss there, Glenn Munford. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of how we got this uh, ball rolling. And it all kind of started from a, an Instagram message. And uh, it, what a great Instagram message message it was uh, led us to having this great interview. And uh, I want to thank you again for taking your time to talk with me today. Yeah. So ASTV, they do an incredible job. And uh, I was watching the brick tournament and there's just so many questions going through my head on, you know, the ASTV and clever and how we could help. And, you know, I sent the text and I'm glad I did. Glenn's been great to uh, talk with and, uh, you guys put on a heck of a broadcast, and it was a lot of fun to watch the bricks. So keep doing great work. Well, thanks, Chris. Hopefully, uh, things continue to materialize for both sides, and uh, this won't be the last time that we're talking. For sure. Take care. Thanks, Chris. Have a great night. Yeah, thank you. You too. That was Christopher Stieg from Clever and ex NHLer, veteran of over 600 games. We're going to send it to a quick commercial break and come back for more Off the Wall with Cody.
Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid connected, off grid, and battery backup systems are 100% write off in the year you purchase for any company or farm? Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1 866 5 Evolve or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back, everybody. Great interview there with Christopher Steve. Glad we were able to cross paths after ASTV's coverage of the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Tournament. Speaking of that Brick Invitational Tournament, uh, go ahead and check out our ASTV Facebook page to see some of the highlights from the two weeks of ac action there in Edmonton earlier last month. Also on our social media pages, keep an eye out for some of the updates coming through from some of our the teams we support here on the network, uh, such as the Prince George Kodiaks, Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, and the Pemina Valley Hawks, just to name a few. Uh, just taking a look here, I know I had mentioned a little bit earlier uh, about the player profile samples. Uh, we're just going to take a quick look here. at one of the samples here on the ASTV website under the player profiles drop down you can see one of our sample uh, John Doe just a kind of a sample here kind of give you a bit of an idea of the layout uh, that ASTV us here at ASTV are working I uh, want to go with your stats as mentioned uh, Scouting Report, Stats Track is another company, uh, as well as Clever, as I mentioned, that we're working with. You can see we can have access to some additional stats that you wouldn't normally get with any other company. Uh, get a bio here. Uh, and then interviews we, we've done with the player. Uh, we can put here coach, teacher, uh, then a scouting video along with links and endorsements for the player there and that just gives you a bit of an idea of what we're working on here with astv uh taking a look at some of the other stuff that's happened on the network earlier today on the on the ice show theo tuckaluck had wayne kozar on of trailblazer hockey advisors to feature on his segment wayne's world this week they went on to talk about wayne's latest webinar on mental performance in hockey as well as and helping players navigate the importance of maintaining your choice uh, to commit to schools. You can find those past episodes, as I mentioned, uh, past editions of ASTV content on our YouTube page, our Facebook page, and on our website, amateursports.tv. Under the sports drop down page, uh, you can find shows like the On the Ice Show. Uh, our up-and-coming shows such as the Indigenous Sports Show and AAA Hockey Show and Prospect Show. Uh, before we end off for tonight, uh, one more thing to kind of highlight uh, possibly coming to ASTV is uh, a show covering, uh, you know, show covering leagues where, you know, we can have multiple 
reporters from separate uh, locations and having a, a general show just outlining uh, what happens in the league. Uh, you are interested in possibly participating in a show such as this or some of the shows that we do have. Uh, we are always looking to expand our network and our viewership. So uh, if you're a uh, man or a uh, woman who's looking to possibly get into doing a sports show, it doesn't have to be hockey, uh, can be male sport, female sport. There's so many uh, different opportunities out there for people who do want to become a part of sport and amateur sport and really, uh, you know, get their opinions out there and uh, get their voice kind of heard in their thoughts uh, about sports in general. But for our Tuesday's edition of Off the Wall with Cody, I'm your host, Cody Wall, saying thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of your evening.